I'm like, how do I say it in your language? Katikara, katikara, katikara. You know, Malayalam cinema. It, it's so genuine. If I asked Tovino Thomas to do a Superman punch and it's not looking quite right, you know, I told him, I said, you're going to hate me and you're going to love me. Samir and Basil looked at me and they're like, Vlad, you're going to have to tell him to do it one more time. And as they're telling me this, they're laughing. They're laughing. Everyone that's in Kerala, thank you very much. I want to say that. Hi, Vlad. Hello, Manu. How are you? I'm fine. What about you? Very well. Very excited for uh, this Friday. Uh, yeah, me too. And we are, we are only the audience, but we are, we are also excited to see the first superhero of Malayalam. As am I, yes. It's, it's a big venture that uh, the production team has taken. And, uh, you know, so far the reviews, the very minimal reviews that have come out have been very positive. And I'm very happy to hear that because a lot of hard work went into this project. And I know it's a very big thing in Kerala and for the Malayalam cinema yes. as well. And uh, I have heard then in the review that uh, the climax fight scenes were superb. I heard that from one of my friends. And he said that just watch it and just feel it. And I heard that the climax fight scenes was super awesome. And I'm, I'm actually I'm very much excited to see that. Awesome. So am I. So am I. I, ha <laughs> I haven't seen the final product. Uh -huh. But working on it was was wonderful. We had about two weeks to go ahead and do the climax fight. Uh -huh. And we finished just a little bit under that. It's also one of the first things that we prepped here mm -hmm. in Los Angeles after Kevin reached out to me to do the movie. Okay. So I have very high hopes and expectations. I've seen a video that you have been uh, screaming that Katikra, Katikra. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So when I, when I started working on the movie, I realized how different the um, languages are in, in India. Yeah. Because I, I know a few words here and there in Hindi and Punjabi because of my wife. But when I started to say certain things, you know, Basil and Samir were like, that's not how we say, that's not how we count. But one of the things they taught me how to say was fire. Because if you watch the trailer... Um, you'll notice once our hero lands, you'll see some fire around. So I was yelling regularly and, you know, I kept yelling fire, fire. And Basil just looks at me and he's like, they don't understand what you're saying, Vlad. I'm like, how do I say it in your language? Katikara, katikara, katikara. And what are the other uh, words you learned in Malayalam? Just that. <laughs> just, that. that. just that. Just that. There, there was so much um, of... Katikara, katikara. It's the only thing that stood out to me. Once that was over, once we finished the climatic fight, no more fires in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so much fire in the climax, right? There was a good amount, yes. I, th I think um, we'll see some fire in it. And again, everyone was able to see it in the trailer. Any questions related to that, I'll be able to answer. But yeah, the, the fire was, uh, there was a lot of fire. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, how did you reach to Minel Murli? We can start from Minel Murli itself because that's the uh, next big release that we are waiting. Yeah, uh, famous story. Uh, Kevin from Weekend Blockbusters reached out to me, the executive producer, and I thought it was a scam email. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. It, it wasn't until he started to send me more information, documents, and things like that. And when I say documents, I'm talking about like storyboards and artwork uh, that were done by Pavi Sankar, an yeah. amazing amazing artist and then i started to look through and i was like wow wow this is very detailed and this is very exciting because what i saw from the storyboards was very different from the kind of superhero movies you see um it, it was it felt a lot more grounded and it was very unique because it takes place in in, in a city village right yes so th th that really got my attention and when we started to talk about this movie, I got even more excited because of all the elements that were being introduced to me. And then from there on, you know, um, I signed on board. We prepped the movie in Los Angeles. We spent two weeks prepping the movie. Mm -hmm. There was a climatic fight that we did. And then there was another scene. And I was ready to leave to India, I think maybe four or five months later, like sometime in March of 2020. And sure enough, COVID shut down the world. Yes. And uh, we resumed again the following year, flew back in February um, at the end of Feb, and we just kept working 
working, 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 working. But uh, yeah, it, it, it was very interesting because when Kevin reached out to me, I had never heard of Malayalam cinema. Mm-hmm. Um, working in India already for five years, I wasn't familiar with that cinema. I didn't know that there aren't any song and dances, right? That's something that I came to find out. And I came to also to find out that, um, you know, Malayalam cinema, it, it's so genuine and it's such a beautiful art form because there are stories to tell, right? I'm, I'm not bashing on Bollywood because, uh, you know, I've worked there a lot. They make a lot of good movies. But for me, it seemed like Malayalam cinema, there's a lot of meaning and a lot of emotions involved in the movie making process as far as, and as, as well as the final product versus, you know, someone walking on screen, super slow motion. It's like eyes are glittering for a whole two minutes. It's like, I, I can't, you know, those are fun movies. I, th- those are like the fast and furious of India. Right. <laughs> um, so yeah, very, very different um, experience. And f- as soon as, um, I got an understanding of what it is um, Kevin and Basil and the entire team was trying to make. I was all up for it. I got very excited. Very, very excited. The superhero movies already took place in cities. That means in uh, there will be more buildings and uh, the superheroes will, and the villains will come there and the superheroes and villain will be fighting over there. And, but according to Minyal Muruli, it's, Uh, take, it, took, it took place in a village and there are no buildings and there are only uh, some trees and something like that. So uh, what's that challenging for you because you have never done such a thing before because a local, it's a local superhero. You know, the beautiful thing about it being so grounded in that respect, and I talk about this all the time, is that um, when we were shooting everything, we try to make it as practical as possible. I love practicality. I try not to go into wire work if I don't need to. I try not to go into VFX world if I don't need to. I want to make it as uh, real and as unique as possible. So with that in mind, putting the superhero elements into this movie, you know, I, I say when you watch a Marvel movie, everything is primarily shot on the green screen, right? It's almost as if the real life human beings complement the VFX where over here, because it's so grounded because there's so much more practicality involved it's as if the vfx are complementing mm-hmm. the real aspects of the environment of you know our characters things like that so for me it was a lot of fun thinking about superhero elements vfx elements while designing the sequences yet knowing that this is going to be as real as possible which is very different in today's world because you know, with, with the success of Marvel movies and DC movies, there's a lot of VFX. There's a lot of, we're going to go into this other universe, other world, we're going to go into space. But over here, it's like, no, we're going to be on planet Earth in a village, <laughs> somewhere in remote India. Yes. And again, that's also one of the things that really caught my eye. And I think that's what makes this movie so special is because it stands out from other superhero movies in that respect. There, there isn't a huge grand uh, budget, right? So we have to use all of our skills, you know, that we have and that we've acquired throughout the years of filmmaking to be able to do what we did with this movie. And, uh, you know, I hope audiences really respect and enjoy that. Was that challenging for you to place a superhero in a remote village that you already said? Because there are no green screens there, there will be no, this, I would say already said it's only fire, fire, fire and full of fire, in, especially in the climax scenes that I have heard a little bit. And uh, was that how, how much challenging for you? That was how much challenging for you? Well, honestly, um, when I got to India, it was a lot easier to work on these uh, fights because we had prepped them in Los Angeles. Um, in Los Angeles, I had a previous team. I had Jimmy Chu, Fernando J. Huerto. I had a gentleman by the name of Chris Clements, who has a VFX channel called Fix It and Post. Pretty well-known guy. So I brought in a very unique and special team as well as a rigger. And we started discussing what it is that we wanted to see in this fight. What things have been done, what things haven't been done. Because for me, I love to stay grounded. 
I love people fighting on the ground. I love designing action sequences on the ground, right? Not an air and this and that. Very minimal wire work. If there's any kind of wire work involved, you know, I prefer to make it look as real as possible. So we just jerk back, hand pulls, things like that. Um, so going back to your question, there weren't that many challenges in that respect, knowing that they're going to be VFX elements. I think the biggest challenge was coming into the project, knowing that I didn't really have any time with my actors. So that's the challenge right there, because someone like me, I'm very particular. I'm a huge nitpicker. So if I asked Tovino Thomas to do a Superman punch and it's not looking quite right, you know, I told him, I said, you're going to hate me and you're going to love me. You're going to hate me because I'm going to make you do take after take after take, but you're going to love me for the end product. And I think there was one particular move that he did, maybe 50 takes or so. We did like 30 to 35 takes. We put it into the edit. We looked at it and we're like, it's not working. We got to do it again. You know, so that was the most challenging part. Because I'm so demanding, I also wanted to make sure that I'm not exhaust exhausting our actors. The last thing you want to do is know that you have a two-week schedule and day number four of filming, your lead actor is exhausted. Your lead villain is exhausted. Now what are you going to do? So fortunately for us, everything just, I, I don't know, I don't know if it was like an act of God or the universe, but thankfully everything just happened to work out the way it should have. And I think one of the successes was that um, because we went ahead and did a previous in the States, we, we had a very wonderful on-spot editor, Shafiq. Hell yeah, Shafiq. What we would do is we put the previous on the timeline. And as we were getting our shots, we would be placing those shots in, 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 in until it's like, okay, here's the final shot that we need. Sequence is done. Because by the time I got there for the climatic fight, um, everything for the most part had already been shot. I think they had a, a hundred to 105 days before me or something like 90 days of filming. So Basil made sure that he did an amazing job of setting everything up for me as soon as I arrived. But again, most challenging part was just, you know, making the actors go take after take after take. And when everyone watches the movie, they'll see that all of the actors, for the most part, are somehow involved. And, you know, I'd, I'd love to do more interviews after the movie's released to talk about all the funny stories behind some of the sequences. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm pretty certain that some of the actors weren't too thrilled with me going take after take after take. I mean, one time, um, Samir and Basil looked at me and they're like, Vlad, you're going to have to tell them to do it one more time. <laughs> and as they're telling me this, they're laughing. They're laughing, right? Because I've, I've made this poor actor do something, I think, 17 times. 17 times. Yeah. And for me to say, hey, one more time, that's a lot to ask for. Someone that's never worked with me, they're probably thinking, this guy is crazy. This crazy American they brought in, what is he doing? <laughs> I'm doing what he's asking me to do. But it's like, no, it, it's not quite right. So for me to try to have a straight face, you know, if you're Samir and Basil and I'm looking straight at you, I just turn to my actor. I'm like, one more time. And I turn back and I'm laughing hysterically, you know, because it, it, it's funny, but it's not funny. You know, I, I don't want anyone to get hurt on set. But at the same time, it's please listen to your action directors because they're there to try to make you look the best that you can look. You know, so when someone wants to do it their own way and it's not turning out right, I'm going to ask them to do it many, many times. <laughs> so you worked in uh, Indian movies and I'm mean, asking about uh, Sultan, your work with uh, Salman Khan. And it was about an uh, Indian sport. It's called Gusti, Gusti in India. And uh, how you adapted to that? Because it's not an, uh, it's not an uh, action that you have been doing previously in Hollywood films or something like that. And you have never done this before. And, uh, how was it working with Salman and how was it uh, working on Gusti? Well, as far as any kind of unique martial arts goes, what usually happens is if we get a script that asks for a particular style right, of a martial art, what we'll do is we'll start researching. We'll start watching tournaments, forms, anything and everything that we can to get as much knowledge as we can about the art, about the sport, about the martial art. And then from there, we go ahead and kind of make our own version of it. But also, for example, that, that big mud wrestling fight, 
um, we we did a pass, and then Ali Abbas, the director, he flew out to the states, and he came out to the gym, and he had notes to give. So we did another pass that was to his liking. So when it comes to any sort of action, the action team, for the most part, will do their research, and then they'll start conceptualizing. We'll get inside the gym. We'll start talking about ideas, what would be cool, what would be good for the actor, what would be good for the character and the story, all these elements. Um, as far as working with Salman Khan, it was great. It was wonderful. Um, I think we might have had like 30 days of uh, training scheduled, mm -hmm. and we had a full-on team. Um, we had a wrestler. We had a coach that knew wrestling, jujitsu, boxing. I was there to help Salman with his kicks, you know, um, but it was wonderful. It was wonderful. We would train him at the farmhouse. We would train him in one of the studios. There was a lot of training going on, a lot of training. And what's interesting, you know, a lot of these actors um, all over the world, they'll usually tell you how they do it their way. Like, for example, when we met Salman Khan um, after, I think, maybe our first training day or right before we did our first training day, we went over to his place and he showed us some sequences and he says, um, this is the way I do action. You know, like I'll show up and they'll tell me what the action is. And a lot of the same things happen here in the States, whether you're working on movies, on TV shows, many times what will happen is you show up and it's like, okay, there's going to be an action sequence design. It, right. So he told us this and we're like, that's great, but you're going to be training with us for a while. So again, I think roughly 30 days over the course of like a month and a half, two months, something like that, because we had to get him ready for the role. Whenever we're talking about something like mixed martial arts, there is so much to learn. Punching, kicking, you know, uh, ground games, uh, wrestling, takedown, you know, a lot, a lot goes into the kind of training and the choreography that we create and how we get our actors involved. So it's all baby steps, baby steps. But it, again, it was wonderful, especially on the farmhouse. We were eating all the natural foods that came from the farm. Um, some of the guys went uh, uh, diving from his cliff into his big lake. It, again, it was great. It was really, really wonderful. How was it asking to Salman Khan, sir? One more take, one more take. Have you ever asked? <laughs> well, you know, uh, <laughs> for, fortunately for me, I was the assistant coordinator on the show. Mm -hmm. And Larnell Stovall was running the show. But Larnell and I are on the same wavelength when it comes to action. For the most part, if we're not happy with something, we're like, let's do it again. <laughs> so uh, we, we, we've been told that <clears throat> Salman has a particular way of doing things. Mm -hmm. But uh, honestly, as soon as the action team came on board, all that went out the door. We, d we try to keep our actors under nine takes. Unless, unless I'm doing a superhero movie and I'm like, hey, Tovina, I need you to do another one. And it's like, take 55. But for the, the, the general rule of thumb is if you can, you, you want to try to keep your actors under a certain amount of takes so that way you don't exhaust them. But when we were doing Sultan, there were times where it was like take after take after take after take after take, you know, to make sure that it was perfect. And that's all we want. It's not because it's like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and work this guy. So I could say, that's what I did. Not at all. It's so that way our actors can look the best they've ever looked. That's, that's always been my goal. I tell my performers, I want to make you look like gods. I want to make you look better than anyone's ever made you look. That's the kind of dedication and commitment I have towards my actors. Because if I didn't care, I'd say, that's wonderful. Let's move on to the next take. And I wouldn't care about the final product. But that's, for me, that's not the way I work. I care. Sometimes I care too much. And I'm sorry, Tovino, for making you do so many takes, but I'm sure you're happy you did them. Yeah. And uh, you have worked in Bahubadi to the climax fight scenes, and you have choreographed that, right? Yeah. So while we were doing um, Sultan, we were reached out to by the Bahubali team. So we went ahead and we designed the final fight between the two brothers, yeah. the climatic fight. That's something that we had a very short period of time to do. But we met with the director. He came to us while we were designing and shooting and choreographing and all that. Um, and I think they did a pretty wonderful job with sticking to the choreography that they chose from the previous because they're literally shot for shot, which is wonderful, which is wonderful because my whole thing is if a production is going to spend 
money on the previous, why not follow it on the day to make everyone's life easier if everyone is happy with it? Which also kind of goes back to doing the climatic fight for Milo Morali. We had a blueprint, a visual blueprint. And as we were going, just fill it in, fill it in, fill it in, fill it in. So that, that worked out wonderfully. And uh, you said that in the Sultan, in Sultan, you have been uh, making the hero stand in the mud and been fighting out there. And when it's come to Bahubali 2, it's been, uh, they've been flying. And they, we, we, if we hit that man, uh, he will fly more than 20 meters or 15 meters uh, from, the, from the sport. And uh, it, it's very different. I mean, oh, absolutely. And Absolutely, how how yes. did you correct uh, in between this type of uh, action differences over here? The thing is, I really love what I do. I tell people that I play with real life action figures and my action figures are the actors and the actresses, right? So it's like a real doll. When you really, really love something that you do, you just want to keep doing it. So in that sense, again, we, we had a very wonderful team. It was Arnel Stovall, it was myself. We had Chad Guerrero, we had Hans Marrero, and we were in that creative zone where we just wanted to create. When it came time for Sultan, because of previouses, we had already pre-planned the action sequences. So what we're doing now is we're just getting everyone up to date with the action. Our actors, you know, the camera department, the director, we're just fine-tuning it. So that means during that time that we're training our actors, we're not creating anything new just yet. So the, your, your creative juices are flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing. So when someone comes up to you and says, hey, do you want to do this, which is completely different, you're like, yes. Because honestly, the amount of MMA movies done, um, there was Sultan and then I action directed Brothers. Um, I helped out with a movie called Never Back Down 3. And then I think there were like two or three more MMA movies. It was just like, okay, too much octagon, too much ring. So doing something different like Bahubali, again, it's so something just clicks in your head and you're like, I have ideas for this. I have ideas for this. I have ideas for that. You know, but for, for that, um, Larnell did an amazing job of navigating the team and we were just punching things in. Hey, it would be cool if the, you know, if the, uh, character did this this would be a good story point now when we were designing the sequences we were very limited with what we had as well as time because we had already been working on a different project so the things that we created for bahubali 2 again a lot more grounded very minimal visual effects and no wire work if there was anything that implemented wire work it was, again, through practical camera movement, through practical body movement, and that's what we did. You have been working in Hollywood and in Indian films nowadays, and I uh, just want to ask, what's the main difference that you have been spotting in these two movie industries apart from money? <laughs> well, you know what? He, he, here's what I like everyone to recognize is that... Um, Actually, I'm asking in perspective of an action director. Exactly. Mm -hmm. In the East, the term action director is very well respected. When the action director gets on set, the majority of the time the director sits down, you know, and they let the action director run the show. Um, as an action director, for example, working in India, I dictate, number one, the action. I dictate the camera placement. I dictate the edit for the most part, right? In the States... It's not so much like that. We are not referred to as action directors. We are referred to as second unit directors because second unit could also mean like, hey, uh, we need some kids skateboarding in an alley as an insert somewhere. Go ahead and do that, right? As a second unit director in the States, I can dictate camera angles, but for the most part, I'm going to have very little say about the edit and many more things. So for me personally, when I get an opportunity to work in Asia, in the East, because I've also worked in the Philippines, I've been a uh, part of uh, some Chinese projects. I love knowing that a title, number one, is known, like the action director role is known. And number two, that it's respected. Those are the main differences I'd want to say. That's the difference. Yeah.
<laughs> respect. And, and it's wonderful. I mean, listen, wh- wh- when you have a vision, when you get hired to create, like, for example, Kevin told me that he was looking for an action director for about a year and a half. And he gave me all the names that he went through. And I was like, okay, now this is even more legit than it was before because he's reached out to these people and this sort of things. So Kevin gets to me. As a producer, he's going to go ahead and invest his time talking to me, sending me information, and then eventually his money, right? He's going to pay me to do what I'm doing because he believes I know what I'm doing. So if I dictate something and then I create a product and I send it to the person that's hired me to do it, they're happy. The director's happy. The writer's happy. Everyone is happy. Why not follow the format? You know, for... For example, on the climatic fight, and for a majority of the shoot with me from Minal Murali, it was one camera. <laughs> one camera. Some people would be like, you're crazy. You're crazy. Right? Some people are like, oh, we need to give them options. We need to give the editor. No, we don't. No, we don't. If you're happy with the blueprint that I've given you, follow the blueprint so that way we can make our day and we can all go home on time, get enough rest, and keep moving. Because isn't that why you hired me? Because you think I'm a professional and I know what I'm doing. So why not keep that going throughout all the stages? You know, like that. So for the most part in India, every single time the action director role has been very well well respected. And in the States, there have been several opportunities. I can say that. I've I've worked with some wonderful um, productions that have let me come into the edit room. And then when we see the final product, we're like, wow, it's so good. But when I'm not a part of those things, when I'm not a part of the camera placement, when I'm not part of the edit, there's a completely drastic difference. And that's also one of the reasons I release previses, you know, like on my YouTube channel, on my Facebook page, so people can see what it's supposed to look like. In some time, there will be a side-by-side of the climatic fight of the final product right? With Tovino that we did and the one that I prepped in Los Angeles. And it's like, if we just follow this format, life would be so much easier. Life would be so much easier. Mm -hmm. For the first time when you are coming to India, uh, what was the thought running through your mind? And uh, did you expect this much of love from India and uh, this much of uh, care from India? Uh, How did you, what, what was your thinking and what happened I'm just going to say from the very beginning, um, the Malayalam cinema industry has shown me the most amount of love and respect out of all the industries that I've worked in across the world, all the cinema industries. So number one, everyone that's in Kerala, thank you very much. I want to say that. Um, My first experience in India was working on Brothers. My Up until then, I didn't know anything about India, really. Um, Whatever it is I saw from Bollywood movies, which was very minimal, and just uh, watching the music video with Shah Rukh Khan, Chaya Chaya. (laughs) I watched that on repeat so many times. So many, even on the airplane, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) And then um, the, the, the first place I arrived to was Mumbai. And I'm certain a lot of viewers are going to be like, hmm, that's not the best place to go to (laughs) as your first stop in India. Because when I arrived, I started to see things that I wasn't accustomed. You know, like the United States looks and feels a certain way. And when I got to Mumbai, it was nothing like that. I didn't expect anything like that. I I wasn't expecting, you know, the, the 12 hour days, six days a week, seven days a week. I wasn't expecting any of that. And um, it was definitely a culture shock. So that first experience was a little bit rough. And I tell people, you know, at at the end of uh, Working Brothers, I I cursed India. I cursed India. I said, I'm never coming back here. This place can do this. This place can do that. I'm never coming back here. And then sure enough, a year and 11 days later, I get married in India. You know, so so (laughs) be careful what you say. But... But for example, working on Minal Murali and coming into Kerala, Kerala is the 14th state that I've been in India. It's by far my most favorite state. It's to me one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. It's just 
wonderful and lush. And if I ever get an opportunity to have property in India, 150%, it'll be in Kerala. That's an honor you know, for us. <laughs> thank you. It, it'd be an honor for me as well. Um, so from the first time to the most recent time, very different experiences. And there's so much to talk about as far as experiences go about this movie, but that can be discussed once the movie is released. Because I saw and I did and I experienced so many things that I've never seen or experienced or done anywhere else in the world with any other production. So hell yeah. Hell yeah, Kerala. Hell yeah to Malayalam, you know, film industry. Hell yeah. And the man, one last question. Uh, what we can expect from Minerali and that you can uh, tell us as an action choreographer? The ultimate goal I want for audiences to feel, besides pure excitement and joy, is pretending that you're watching a superhero for the first time. Like, what, 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 when people watch this movie and they see the action sequences, especially the climatic fight, I'm hoping what happens to them is their 20-year-old self, their 30-year-old self, their 40, 50, 60, even 70-year-old self suddenly becomes a five-year-old. And they're watching this magical and beautiful thing for the first time. Mm -hmm. And they get excited. You know, with, for example, with martial artists or people that love watching martial arts movies, when you watch the Bruce Lee movie, when you watch the Jackie Chan movie, when you watch the Van Damme movie, when you got out of the theater, you got pumped. You wanted to train. You got inspired and motivated. And I hope people get inspired and motivated with not just the action sequence and not just the movie, but spe specifically the climatic fight. Because while we were creating that here in Los Angeles with the team, we wanted to do things that were very, very different from all the other superhero movies. We wanted to, number one, make sure that we told a story, the right story. You know, because many times what happens is in the superhero movie, it's like all of a sudden it just goes up and then that, like this, right? I wanted to make sure that it's nice and gradual, that the payoff is is you know the right kind of payoff that people stand and cheer and get excited those are my hopes and you know dreams and you know aspirations for what it is i've done as an action designer as an action director as a choreographer i want people to feel awesome i want people to go hell yeah i want people to feel energized you know I, i want people to feel pumped yes i understand that not everyone is the same Some people are going to react differently to different things in the movie. But I really do hope that when that moment comes, everyone feels pumped and energized. And then in their head, they're going, like, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. And I hope that they're very proud of what it is that we were able to accomplish. You know, um, I know it's a big deal. I keep hearing it all the time. And With it releasing, you know, not within just like a few days, four or five days, my heart's pumping. You know, my chest is beating faster and faster and faster and faster because I want people to have the same kind of reaction that all of us did while we were filming it and making it. And the first time we had Shafiq finalize a spot edit for us, right? I mean, I just goosebumps, just goosebumps throughout the entire body because you're thinking to yourself this is what we did we did something number one that's never been done in this kind of a cinema before and the other thing i have to commend the entire team the entire team of minimal morali worked their butts off and I'm, they worked their asses off okay e especially the art department like especially johnny people like that they were doing like 16 18 hour days non-stop and that's the other thing like i told when i when i did brothers it was six days a week right for many many months many many months over here seven days a week <laughs> like i was like when i got to set and i found out that there had already been filming going on for like a week and a half to two weeks before prepping everything 
I'm like, no one here has rested. And they're going. And that shows you how much commitment, how much dedication, and how much love, and you know, and, and how much belief everyone had in making this product. By far, the most amount of positive energy going into anything I have ever been a part of. Because no one ever ever said like, oh, I'm so exhausted, I'm tired. No, it was never like that. It was, we all got to set and we were super pumped and excited because we knew we were making something unique, something original, something very different. And we were all there because I want to say we love what we do. I got very lucky that I got partnered up with the talents of the great director like Basil Joseph and Samir Tahir, our amazing cinematographer, and Andrew, right? Uh, Andrew DeCruz, our VFX artist. It's as if, I, I don't know how, but what Kevin did was he, him and Sophia, um, they prepped the ultimate A team. Because in any industry that you work in, you have your A team, your top players, and your B, your C, your D. And working in the movie industry, you know, departments can be all over the place. But everybody was on top of their game. Everybody was an A player, 150% of the time. 150% of the time, because we just wanted to make sure that everything worked and it turned out the way we were hoping that it would, which, you know, to pump everyone up, get them excited and be super proud that um, the Malayalam film industry produced something so unique, so different, so original that, um, hell yeah, 192 countries, you know, on Netflix, I mean... Oh, yeah, Carella, give yourself a hand of applause. You have to. That's huge. And I really hope that this is the beginning. And I hope that more people start looking into Malayalam cinema because I did. And I was surprised to find the amount of good content that I did. Wonderful, beautiful movies with meaning, you know, not just jumping around and whatever. I mean, yes, all the industries have that. We, like I said, we have our Fast and Furious series, right? In America, woohoo, right? But for the most part, um, the, the the film industry that I saw coming out of Kerala is very different, you know, to me personally than, than, than Bollywood and than, than, um, the Telugu cinema, the stuff that's, you know, coming out of Hyderabad. It's all, it's all very different. There's meaning. And I said, um, when I was watching the rough edit of the movie, you know, Basil is such a wonderful director. He was toying with my emotions. Because as individuals, when we're watching something, we connect differently, right? Me as a parent, for example, when I watch a conflict between a parent and a child, that hits me harder than someone that's got no kids, no wife, no nothing. You know, they're free-spirited and vice versa. No husband, no kids, you know, it hits you differently. Um, so watching it, tears came down my cheeks like three different times because I'm an emotional guy, <laughs> but it was wonderful. It, it, it was great to see that, um, I was part of something meaningful. So hell yeah, Basil and the entire team that, um, helped put this together. And Vlad, thank you so much. And it was nice talking to you and, uh, hope we can talk little more after the release of the movie and I, and I want to see a Mindal Broly poster behind you and uh, oh I'd love that hey Kevin <laughs> make that happen <laughs> and uh, make sure you come to India and you come to Kerala and we can meet together and we can spend time together and we need you in Kerala in a space over here as you wish um, may God bless you and everything happens on your way uh, that's nice, talk, nice talking to you and uh, thank you so much. Uh, love from Kerala, love from India. Oh yeah, thank you guys. Thank you very much. I look forward to reconnecting. Again, watch the movie. Everybody watch the movie and then there'll be interviews about all the stories. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Sure. Thank sure. you for all your support. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.